that story 30 seconds yeah, 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 yeah. whoa okay 20 seconds <laughs> my name is Zahira I am 52 years old and I've been a Muslim for 20 years I am British been in England since year zero for myself <laughs> um, um, my mum and dad weren't practicing Christianity at all didn't even call themselves Christians didn't go to church didn't do anything I took myself to church for the choir. I liked singing. So I went to choir and went there for about three or four years, two different churches, but didn't really believe, I'd say. You used to wear the, used to wear the cassock and the, the little frilly thing and all that type of thing, and I used to sing. That's what I liked to do. But I didn't really believe in God at that point, I'll be honest. From 1994, I started to bike ride from St. James to Bratmills in Northampton, which is about a five mile bike ride day there and back and I started to take notice of creation the sky the birds I love birds the birds the, the, the grass the, the, the just even through the elements because I went through spring summer winter you know all of them and I saw the snow I cycled in snow but anyway it was it was the creation that I fell in love with I'd be honest and I started to understand that there must be a creator that there must be a God who made all of this because it's, it was just too beautiful to take him. After about two years, that went on for about two years, and I started to think that there must be some rules and regulations, some, something different, because I was still drinking alcohol at that point. I was actually smoking at that point. I was doing everything that a non-Muslim would do. But I realised that I needed some goals, I needed some something to give me some rules, which I didn't have. I was still able to do what I wanted to do. So I started to look at faith, I started to look at religion. And I went everywhere that talked about God. I went to I went to sit with Mormons who told me I couldn't um, drink Coke or drink coffee which I wasn't drinking a lot of, but, you know, to tell me to th not to do those things, it was quite hard. I sat with Christians who I'd heard before. Christianity was something I'd heard before. It's what I'd, grew up, what I'd grown up with. I sat with Mormons. Oh, sorry, I went to Jehovah Witness meetings where I felt very strange. I felt very unaccepted. I don't know why. I just felt it wasn't the place for me. Um, I read a lot of books. The Jehovah Witness gave me a book called Search, and I've still got it, and it's got every faith, that I, even faiths I've never even heard of, in that book, and I, I read the whole book. When I came to Islam, I stopped, and I, it just, the penny dropped. It was just like it opened a clear window for me. It was nothing confusing to me about Islam. It was one God. And everything and everything else, everybody else was his creation. And that's what I'd been looking for all my life. You know, something that was going to give me purpose. It was, that was it really. I started to talk to Muslims. I spoke to a couple in London who I actually took my shahada with. They gave me uh, more books, more tapes. I started to listen, I started to read. And I listened to a take by Sheikh Khalid Yassin called The Purpose of Life. I was in tears when I listened to it. I was actually travelling at the time. I used to do a lot of travelling, go on coaches and put my headphones on and things like that. I came home that day and I rang the people up that, I, that gave me this tape and I wanted to take my shahada there and then. I took my shahada, I cried like a baby. It was as if, it was as if I'd gone home for the first time in my life. It was unbelievable, the feeling I had. I can't explain that feeling, but it was just a feeling that I, I knew that I, I was with God for the first time in my life, and I was 32. Islam has given me peace in my heart because my life has not been easy, I'll be honest. I've had a lot of ups and downs in my life. And Islam, it's my ultimate peace. Even before I came in this room, I was thinking about God and asking him to be with me with this and to 
<laughs> and I never had that before. I wasn't brought up with the peace of God. I wasn't brought up with that. I was brought up with drinking and partying and Christmas and Easter and all these things that really didn't give me any depth. There was no depth in it. But when I actually, when I now I know God, and I know that God hopefully loves me and still have a feeling, some, it's just me, so it's, it's just me because of my life that I feel as though God, you know, he's there, but I have to work hard for his love. I have to work hard, but I'm devout, 100% devout to him. And I hope that, you know, he's happy with me. After accepting Islam, I developed patience. I used to be so impatient. <laughs> I had like things done now. <laughs> when I became a Muslim, I read a lot about how patience was such an important part of your characteristics, and I developed it. I've got five children, and I'm a single mother, so I had to develop patience. It was um, something I needed to develop, and I couldn't have done it without God. I could not have done it without God, because every day I've said, and I still say, Please help me to become a good mother, help me to be a good mother, help me to be a good Muslim, help me to be a good person, help me to be a good friend, help me to be a good sister, help me to be a good chair of the group, help me to be everything that I need to be, help me to be the best I can be in this life. And he helps me. I'm not saying I'm the best, because I never will be, I never put myself on top of any pedestal, but I strive, I strive. And I know he helps me to strive. Regardless of whatever's going on in your lives, regardless of who you think you're going to upset or who's not going to want to be with you anymore and reject you, God will never reject you. He'll always be there. And that's what gives you the peace. So if you're thinking about it, please... Research some more, take small steps towards God, open your heart and ask him to guide you. And go, go, you'll never look back. Not in 20 years, I've never ever thought I'd made the wrong mistake, the wrong decision. And that is the only thing in life that is worth being alive for. Peace be with you.